Welcome to Electron Online, and here's another very interesting example to deal with angular momentum. Or at least we can use angular momentum to deal with the problem. And what's the problem? Well, let's say we have a little child, mass 40 kilograms, standing still at the edge of a merry-go-round that has a mass of 200 kilograms. It is also not moving. The child begins to walk along the edge of the merry-go-round, and as we probably all have experienced when we're little, the merry-go-round will begin to rotate in the opposite direction. So the question is, what will be the final angle of velocity of the merry-go-round and what will be the angle of velocity of the child relative to the ground? Well, the child relative to the merry-go-round is very easy to figure out because the child will be walking along the edge at 5 meters per second and we can then use this equation right here to find the angle of velocity of the child relative to the merry-go-round. So maybe I should indicate that in this case we have the angle of velocity of the child relative to the merry-go-round, so that the child relative to the merry-go-round is equal to the tangential velocity divided by the radius. The tangential velocity was given to be 5 meters per second, and we divide it by the radius of 2 meters, which is equal to 2.5 radians per second. So relative to the merry-go-round, the child will be moving around at 2.5 radians per second, but at the same time, the merry-go-round will be rotating in the opposite direction. So relative to the ground, the velo angle of velocity will be somewhat different, and that's what we're trying to find right here, as well as the actual angle of velocity of the merry-go-round. So again, don't worry, angle of momentum conservation is what will get us there. The initial angle of momentum must equal the final angle of momentum. Now, in this case, since neither the child nor the merry-go-round were moving, we can say that the initial angle of velocity, and oh man, my pen so, is drying up. The zero means that nothing was moving initially. We had zero angle of momentum before, and now the child begins to walk. So we have the moment of inertia of the child times the angle of velocity of the child relative to the ground, not relative to the uh, merry-go-round because angle of momentum is conserved relative to the earth, not relative to some other rotating object. So this has to be the angle of velocity relative to the ground, which is of course not the number that we got over here. Plus the moment of inertia of the merry-go-round times the angle of velocity final of the merry-go-round, of course, relative to the earth. So what is this angle of velocity of the child relative to the ground? Well. We take the angle of velocity of the child relative to the merry-go-round and add to that the velocity of the merry-go-round to get the net velocity of the child. So zero is equal to i of the child times the omega, the angle of velocity of the child relative to the ground, plus the angle of velocity of the final of the merry-go-round. And we add that to the moment of inertia of the merry-go-round times the angle velocity of the merry-go-round. Now notice, since the merry-go-round is expected to rotate in the opposite direction, this will of course become negative because it will be clockwise, there will be negative angle of velocity, and so it's the, the velocity of the child minus the number for the, for the merry-go-round. But the sign will take care of itself, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, let's plug in all the other knowns. The moment of inertia of the child walking along the edge is equal to its mass times r squared times omega of c relative to the ground plus omega final of the merry-go-round plus the, angle, the moment of inertia of the merry-go-round which can be considered to be a flat disk so it would be one half the mass times r squared notice I use capital M for the mass of the disk small m for the mass of the child times omega final and now I have to solve this equation for omega final so first I get rid of the parentheses so 0 is equal to mr squared, omega the child relative to the ground, uh, plus mr squared, omega final of the merry-go-round, plus 1 half mr squared with the angle velocity of the merry-go-round. Now notice, I'm going to solve this equation for omega final. Hmm. Actually, what I need to do here is relative... Two, oh no, this will be, ah, slight error here. This is going to be relative to the merry-go-round, relative to the merry-go-round, relative to the merry-go-round, because if I add this to this, I get the velocity relative to the ground. So, quick correction here. I have the, I'm trying to find the omega, the angle velocity of the child relative to the ground. 
I do that by finding the omega, the angle velocity of the child relative to the merry-go-round, which I figured out over there. I add to that the angle velocity of the merry-go-round to give me the angle velocity relative to the ground. So that's what I need. So I forgot to go ahead and change the subscript. Now I'm set. This I know, because I just calculated it. This is what I'm trying to find out. So I'm going to solve that equation for omega final. So omega final is equal to, I'm going to move this part of the equation to the other side. So this becomes minus the mass of the child radius squared times omega of the child relative to the merry-go-round, which is what I have there, divided by, notice I have these two terms. If I factor out omega final, I'm left with mr squared plus one half big mr squared. That goes to the denominator, so I have mr squared plus one half big mr squared. Now notice that in the numerator and denominator, I have an r squared, so this cancels out with this. And finally, I can say that omega final, this is of the merry-go-round, is equal to minus m times the omega of the child relative to the merry-go-round divided by the mass of the child plus one-half the mass of the merry-go-round. And now I'm ready to go ahead and plug in the numbers. So this is equal to minus 40 kilograms times 2.5 radians per second because that represents the, the angle of velocity of the child relative to the merry-go-round, which I have over there, divided by the mass of the child plus the mass of the merry-go-round, one which half is times the 200 kilograms. All right, now we're ready for our calculator. In the numerator, we have 40 times 2.5, which is 100. In the denominator, we have 140, so it's 100 divided by 140. And we get 0.714. So this is equal to 0.714 radians per second. So that would be the final angle of velocity of the merry-go-around. And now we can find the final angle of velocity of the child relative to the ground. So omega of the child relative to the ground is equal to, that's what we have right here, is the omega relative to the merry-go-round which is omega relative to the merry-go-round plus the omega final of the merry-go-round. So this is equal to 2.5 radians per second. And, oh, don't forget, we need a minus here because it's rotating in a clockwise direction. So this becomes minus 0.714 radians per second. And so that would be equal to 1.786 radians per second. So, even though the child, relative to the rim of the merry-go-round, is moving at an angle of velocity of 2.5 radians per second, the effective velocity of the child relative to the ground is only 1.786 radians per second because the merry-go-round is rotating in the opposite direction at a minus 0.714 radians per second. And that's how you do that problem.